The other day I found myself standing in front of the remains of the Gold King mine that started life as Bob Womack's El Paso Lode. I didn't actually know it was there. I was just following a trail that I hadn't followed before and all of a sudden it was right there in front of me. I was surprised by how odd I was to be where it all started. Now, if you wish to visit the site yourself, park at the Cripple Creek District Museum and follow the signs for the Gold Camp Trail. It's actually a pretty short hike because the trail is cut short due to the mining activity. But where the trail terminates, you'll find several excellent interpretive signs. Now, quick note, much of the trail you walk is surrounded by an active mining district. Observe all the posted warnings and stay on the trail. Also, when you depart the Cripple Creek District Museum, you'll pass by several homes on the way to the trailhead. So, please be respectful to the homes and the residents who live there. Welcome to Stories from the Midland, a collection of historic tales from Teller County and the surrounding areas. In today's story, we look into the life of Robert Miller, Bob Womack. This episode was written and is being presented for you by me, Tommy Allen. Most of the people in Teller County know the name Bob Womack. He's the man credited with finding the first gold and launching the Cripple Creek Gold Rush. But what do we really know about the man? Until recently, my impression of Womack was that he was a drunk cowboy that stumbled on gold in a creek before selling his claim for significantly less than it was worth and dying in poverty. But in truth, Bob Womack worked hard to discover that gold, and he didn't keep the discovery to himself. While he was overly animated on the subject while drunk, he also convinced some men that would become historic figures of the gold camp to follow him into the mountains so that he could show them where they could find gold of their own. My thought on this is that anyone who could have discovered the gold, it took a particular person to bring others to the discovery to share in the potential riches. The idea for this episode came after I read the amazing book by Linda Womack, Cripple Creek, Bob Womack, and the Greatest Gold Camp on Earth. I voraciously read this book in its entirety on hour and a half outbound and inbound flights from and to Denver International Airport. My preconceptions for Bob Womack were shattered, and I came to respect this driven yet tragic figure in Cripple Creek history. Robert Miller Womack was born in Kentucky in August of 1884 to Samuel Red Womack and Corella A. Womack, maiden name Booker. Siblings Margaret, Eliza, and William would follow over the next seven years. Bob and Sam traveled west to Colorado after the first shots were fired at Fort Sumter in April of 1861. Sam was concerned that Bob would be called on to enlist, so the two headed out amid rumors of a Pikes Peak gold rush. They arrived at Clear Creek Canyon in Colorado and began learning about prospecting. Excited by what they found, they returned to Kentucky to gather up Corella and the rest of the family. When they returned to Clear Creek in the summer of 1861, Sam and his sons Bob and William discovered and staked a claim on a rich silver mine. Six years later, Sam sold the claim for $10,000 and the family moved to Fountain Creek, about 10 minutes south of Colorado City. That's where they established a ranch. But while Bob worked the ranch out of obligation to his family, he much preferred ranging out on his horse or joining friends for drinks in Colorado City. He also wanted to get back to the exciting life of prospecting for gold. 
Sam eventually sent Bob to an area near Mount Pisgah around what is now Cripple Creek to scout for ranching possibilities. Bob would end up spending a considerable amount of time riding his horse around the area, becoming more knowledgeable than just about anyone else. He even led one of Ferdinand Hayden's crews to survey the area. In 1876, after Colorado achieved statehood, Bob's brother bought a ranch near Mount Pisgah and Bob moved to the area permanently, squatting and building a cabin on a piece of land he named Poverty Gulch. Every day, Bob followed Cripple Creek to where he worked at his cattle. As he rode, he kept a sharp eye towards the creek to watch for signs of gold. And in May of 1878, Bob found a piece of gold-bearing float while watering his horse. Bob and his brother-in-law began working the creek. Over the next three years, they saw little success, and Bob's brother-in-law left the effort. But Bob didn't give up. He continued life as a rancher while maintaining his search for gold. In 1885, the first of the men who would prove influential to the Cripple Creek area arrived at Bob's cabin door. Denver-based real estate partners Horace Bennett and Julius Myers were interested in a large area ranch. So, Bob guided them throughout the scenic area. Bennett and Myers and the large area of land they purchased would later become vital in the establishment of the city of Cripple Creek. In the spring of 1890, Bob began digging exploratory shafts, and on October 20th, he discovered gold ore in a crevice in the second shaft he dug. He used dynamite to penetrate the crevice and took the ore to be assayed. With the ore proven to contain valuable gold, Bob registered his find as the El Paso claim. Bob began to bring others to the area and proposing they state claims of their own. Among them was a carpenter named Winfield Scott Stratton. While initially unimpressed with Bob's claims of gold to be found, he nevertheless let Bob take him on a week-long tour of the area in the summer of 1891. Based on this ride, Stratton established a Vindicator and Washington claims. Then on July 4th, Stratton found gold-bearing float in a stream at the base of Battle Mountain, reminiscent of Bob's own discovery in 1878. Here, he staked the Independence claim, and in the coming years, this discovery would make Stratton Cripple Creek's first millionaire. Stratton would also become the area's leading philanthropist and also help others to become influential mine owners. Among those Stratton would assist were the owners of the Portland mine, Jimmy Burns and Jimmy Doyle, when they discovered gold on their own tiny tenth of an acre claim, the Portland. The Jimmies knew that the surrounding mines would try to sue them out of their claim, so they approached Stratton for help. After the dust settled, the Portland Gold Mining Company became the largest gold-producing entity of the district, and the Jimmies became the richest men in Colorado. Bob never really developed a talent for developing his mine, and in 1894, Bob sold his interest in it but retained 3% of the profits. When he first discovered the gold in the small creek, the region contained less than 500 inhabitants. But by the time he sold his mine, the population had jumped to over 10,000. And while he never became a rich man, he seemed content to be the man who discovered the gold no one else believed was there. A few years later, at the age of 52, Bob moved back to the Womack family home in Colorado Springs. In 1902, he was honored to be named the Grand Marshal for Cripple Creek's 4th of July celebration. In July of 1904, Bob made one last trip to Cripple Creek to spend a few days with his old friends. He also visited his old cabin in Poverty Gulch before returning to Colorado Springs. Not long after, he developed a condition which paralyzed the entire left side of his body. Five years later, still suffering from the paralysis and heartbroken over the loss of his favorite niece and regular companion to typhoid fever, Bob Womack slipped into a coma and died on August 10, 1909. He was buried at Evergreen Cemetery in Colorado Springs next to his beloved niece. Robert Miller, Bob Womack's life's ambition was to prove to those around him that the southwestern slope of Pikes Peak was rich in gold. While he achieved this, he was a relatively unsophisticated man and he never profited from that achievement. But maybe that's because he never really sought to. 
he seemed content and even honored to just be recognized as the man whose discovery led to the greatest gold camp on earth. Thank you for joining me for this episode. This is Tommy Allen, and on behalf of Trevor Phipps, have a great day. And should you find yourself riding a horse in the backcountry, keep an eye on the creeks and streams as you pass. We look forward to having you join us next time for more Stories from the Midlands. I didn't actually know it was there. I was just following a trail that I hadn't followed before, and all of a sudden, I just screwed this up because I didn't hit the play button. You know what? That, and you know, when you don't hit the play button, you're all screwed up. How about that?